This is a vacuum pump, and as the dad joke goes, this really sucks. Oh god, that's so bad. It allows us to remove air and other gases from a space to create a vacuum. And if you wait for the end of the video, you're going to see that we make our own vacuum chamber, throw some things inside, and see what happens to them. I bet it's not what you think. If you enjoy these type of informative breakdowns, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel to let the algorithm know that you enjoy seeing these kind of things. 96% of viewers don't get notified and are not subscribed to the channel, so the chances of them seeing cool stuff like this is very low. So let's change that. As I mentioned before, a vacuum pump is a compact device that works by pulling air out of a sealed space to create a vacuum. In this case, a vacuum is not like a vacuum cleaner, it's a literal vacuum, which just means that one area has less pressure than the other. An example where we constantly see this is with vacuum sealed bags or vacuum sealed containers. You know, usually you have like a tomato can or something and you open it up and you hear that loud sound of air rushing in. That's because inside the container, they remove the air and remove at least the oxygen, the things that let bacteria grow, and create a vacuum sealed container. And to do that, they need something like our trusty old vacuum pump. In our case, the vacuum pump has a 12 volt motor, which is connected to the vacuum pump like contraption piece over here. So motor and then vacuum pump. When you connect the motor to a power source, the motor starts spinning. And then inside the pump, there's usually a rotor with vanes or an impeller. As the motor turns the rotor inside of here, the blades spin and push air from inside the pump chamber towards the exhaust port. So here we could see we have air in and then air out. So the idea would be that it's sucking air in through here and releasing it out through there. And then it has a piece in here that stops the flow going backwards, which is what allows us to build up vacuum pressure over time or negative pressure, I should say. The cool thing about a small pump like this and relatively low power is that you can use it in a lot of DIY projects like robotics, where you want to create, let's say a suction arm grabber that you know goes over something, sucks the air under it and then picks it up and moves it somewhere else. You would use something like this for that or just normal like vacuum sealing machines. They have a really small version of this and they just suck all the air out of the vacuum bag and then it gets sealed with glue or some, some sort of material. One thing I would love to see, and please let me know in the comments if you want to see this too, is I have a robot arm that I would love to build and then put one of these on there and have the robot arm pick up things and move them from one place to another. It would definitely be a big project, so I have to see if this video does well and if there's any interest around the vacuum pump itself before I make a project that big. For the demo, we're going to need a couple things to get started. We're going to need the vacuum pump, some tubing, an electronic relay, a 12 volt power supply, a microcontroller we're going to be going with an Arduino, and if you want to make your life a little bit easier you can get some different crimp connectors some glue and a glass container like this one for later on when we make our vacuum chamber oh and a balloon or a empty water bottle would be good to start off we're going to do a couple different things we're going to connect our power supply to an outlet we're going to be connecting the power supply to a relay and then from the relay to our and then we're going to run these tubes on the in and out of the vacuum pump and one of those tubes into this water bottle right here we want the one that sucks air so in my case it's the bottom one here to be the one connected to the bottle so that it sucks all the air from inside the bottle out. And if you're not sure what happens, I think you're gonna find this super interesting. Then just connect the relay to the microcontroller like we always do. If you wanna learn how relays work, how the code behind them works, all that, I've made multiple videos about them before. I'll link them all in the description below. For the power supply, we just have a crimp connector and our positive wire exposed over here. That's because this positive wire will be going into our relay in the middle com port and then our negative will be going directly on our little pin right here left marked red is power and then ground now we have our power supply positive going through the relay to the pump and negative going directly to the pump so the relay will be acting as a switch between our pump and the power supply if you didn't want to do the electronics and the code all you have to do is skip everything from here to the demo by just putting a switch instead of a relay for the relay, as always, we're going to run three pins, one for signal, one for positive and one for ground. And those are going to go. The signal pin is going to go into port number two. The positive is going to go into five volt and the negative is going to go into ground. So technically now we can operate our pump by using the microcontroller and the relay. But there's one last step I want to add since this is a video and you can't sit here and interact and smell and feel all the things that are happening. We're going to be using a water bottle for a physical demonstration of what's happening using our vacuum pump. I want to make a hole in this water bottle and then stick this tube inside and maybe glue around a little bit to make sure it's a nice and tight sealed fit. And then you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to put one tube on that on the exhaust port. and I'm just going to put it out there. So now we just take our bottle here. I'm going to connect it to our pump. So what? So air should be coming from the bottle into pump, pump 
out to the exhaust port over here. One thing I'd like to do as well is take this balloon and put it on the exhaust port and see what happens. See how when I push air out of the bottle, it now starts to fill our balloon. And when I try to push air from the balloon, it does not want to go back into the bottle because of that one-way valve in there. Since we've done so many videos on relays and how they work before, we're just going to copy paste this because you should be a professional now. And we're just going to change this to pin number two because that's the one we connected on the Arduino board. Now, what I'd like to do is run this code on the Arduino to see if the relay clicks on or off. You should be seeing the light go on and off and a sound of the relay actually moving. So we're just going to select the Arduino board so we can see flashes on and off. The one thing I'm not hearing is the loud click. So this relay might be toast. Oh. It's not my relay that's toast. It's my connections are backwards. So I might have toasted it, but let's see. Okay, the relay's clicking on. I just put power into ground and ground into power. Nice. But we're missing one thing. Our power supply is not powering our vacuum pump. So what am I doing wrong now? I can see the vacuum pump is ticking. I'm thinking maybe this power supply is too weak. Negative into negative, positive into positive. Everything here should work. I'm going to plug the Arduino back in and see if it cycles on and off the relay. Boom, on, then off, on and off. Okay. Now we just have to try our power supply out. So I'm not sure how this will go. Holy shit, this thing goes, this thing goes crazy. Look at the bottle. What happens if we take this off? So what's happening is every time the pump turns on, it's sucking as much air as it can from our bottle here. And I mean, look at that. It's off right now and the bottle is just squeezed dry. And then it's expelling it out of the exhaust port over here. And what I was trying to do with the balloon is just to visually show you that air is coming out the other side. And we should see that bottle just get it. I mean, this bottle is vacuum sealed if i've ever seen it now that's super cool but the problem in this case is that our bottle is super fragile but what if the bottle was strong enough to actually maintain some of that difference in pressure and what if we put something inside of the bottle to see how that difference in pressure affects it that's where i was hoping we can use this this is a glass container and we're going to modify it to become our own vacuum chamber and then we're going to put some things inside and see what happens to them you can pretty much maintain this exact setup we don't need this exhaust valve we don't need the the bottle with the input valve, we're going to be modifying this to fit everything. The first thing you're gonna to have to definitely do is make a hole in here. While that glue dries, let's talk about what we have as test subjects for our vacuum chamber. I was thinking we can take a balloon, inflate it a little bit and put it in the chamber and see what happens to the balloon. See if it pops, explodes, if there's glass everywhere, who knows. And then I was thinking we can put some marshmallows and unfortunately I don't have full sized ones but I do have a couple in this bag that we can use little ones and see what happens to them. I would love to do more vacuum chamber things. So if you have something you would want me to put in this chamber, let me know in the comments and if it fits, I'll do it and I'll post it as a short or something. There's actually one more thing I just remembered we can try in our vacuum chamber. This is soda water, carbonated water, which just means it has carbon dioxide in the water. And when you shake it and open it, there's a difference in pressure. Inside it's higher pressure and outside it's lower. So we are the vacuum in this case, whereas inside, it's the atmospheric pressure in our example. We're gonna try and put carbonated water in our vacuum chamber and see what it does. Maybe it'll make the water more fizzy or maybe it's gonna take the fizz out of the water. Watch until the end to see what happens. All right, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. So I got this thing sealed up with some glue. We're gonna take our first example, which is gonna be our weirdly shaped balloon and we're gonna stuff it inside of our homemade vacuum chamber. So you can see it moves freely and it hasn't changed any size. I could feel that we have a pretty bad vacuum leak over here. So I'm going to see if I can get this sealed fixed. Unfortunately, while making the vacuum chamber, we had a little oopsie daisy and we cracked it all the way around, which obviously air can go in and out of. And I don't want a glass shooting around. So uh, this is going to go to the garbage and in replacement of that. We're going to use this little baby brother, this little container right here. We're going to continue off where we were last, which is just putting a balloon in the vacuum chamber and running it like that. Oh. So I don't know if you saw that well on the camera, we're going to run the slow motion camera, but the balloon expanded. The reason for that is because the air around the balloon in the container was getting sucked out and the pressure in the balloon was getting higher than the pressure inside the container. So it was forcing the balloon to expand around the walls until you heard that loud 
air sound, which means our vacuum seal was broken somewhere. All right, let's get those marshmallows in there and run it back one more time. Just gonna stuff as many as I can in there. Put the lid back on, close the lid up, and we're gonna plug that into our vacuum chamber one more time, our vacuum pump. All right, the slow-mo cam is on. Look what's happening to those marshmallows every time I plug the pump in and out. It's a little bit hard to see. Hopefully on the slow-mo cam, it's better. But every time I put that pump in there, the marshmallows expand for the same reason the balloon expanded. The air in the vacuum chamber is being sucked out. So everything inside is trying to kind of leave the vacuum chamber. And the difference between atmospheric pressure and the pressure inside the container is changing drastically. We're gonna do our last test, which is going to be putting carbonated water inside of our little container here. I have a bottle of this Pure Life sparkling water. And obviously if I shake it, you can hear. And you could see, not that I spilled water all over the table, that this thing is obviously carbonated water. We're gonna pour it in our container. To prove, I guess, I'm gonna just take something and we're gonna mix it around the water. And we could see that it's fizzling up. See how this bubbles and carbonation kind of coming up. So we're gonna put the lid on. This time it's gonna be a little bit trickier. All right, now let's plug in the outlet. We're gonna leave it running for about 20, 30 seconds, and then we're gonna look at the results and see what happened to that carbonated drink. <laughs> Sounds like we might have a vacuum leak, unfortunately. Let's try and run it one more time. I don't know if you just saw what happened, but all the carbonation is escaping the vacuum chamber and getting put out by this exhaust port. It's a super interesting thing that's happening. We're actually removing the carbonation from the water and eventually it will become stale tap water, I guess is what you're gonna call it. And plug this back in and check out what's happening to the water. Now I'm gonna leave it running for another minute off camera and then let's test the water to see what happened to that carbonation. I want to open this and see what happens if there's any noise or sound. Now the water looks absolutely still. Let me bring this up to the camera. You can see there's a little bit of carbonation, but it's not very bubbly anymore. Looks like there's a bit of residue from the glue, so that's probably what that white stuff is in there, but it definitely looks a lot less carbonated than it was before. It's unfortunate that this large container broke because I really would have loved to get more zoomed in footage, but I'm gonna buy a new one and we're gonna try this test again, maybe with a bigger one, one the size of the table or something, and we can put something cool inside like a basketball and watch what happens to it. Maybe make it explode. If you enjoyed this type of content, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments if there's anything about the video you think I did wrong, anything you liked, just any type of commentary for the algorithm. If this video does well in the future, we're going to be using this vacuum pump to make some sort of suction gripper arm. And we're going to put that on a 3D printed arm to move things around the table without using any of my hands. I guess that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.